Goo Goo Ga Ga. Please like and subscribe. Former friend who called me a bad influence for being child free just demanded today that I take in his family plus three kids into my home. First, this isn't a post where I'm asking if I did the right thing or not. I know I did the right thing. This is a pure rant about this emotional day. Because if anyone is going to understand, it's you all in the child free community. Here is the gist. A former friend, Dave is not this person's real name, who I haven't had any contact with for almost three years just got in touch with me again. He claims he has a home emergency and needs to find a place for him and wife and three kids to stay while the home situation gets fixed. This is the same guy who, when I was going through something traumatic, told me he can't be my friend because I'd be a bad influence to his kids. The reasoning was that I am child free. Here is a bit of background. The reason for the friendship ending, I was in a high stress situation and I was very sad. My father dying was just one of the terrible things that happened in a span of three months. I was looking for consolation and instead Dave told me that me being a child free woman was a bad influence on their family. Dave had a wife plus two kids then. In short, they didn't want to spend time around me as I wasn't worth it when they have more valuable friends. This was someone I had known since graduate school. We had spent a lot of time doing fun stuff like rock climbing. Dave and I were among a group of mutual bodies who regularly rented out lake houses or winter lodges for summer and winter sports activities. We're talking 10 plus years. Then to just ditch me because he thought I wasn't useful her to LOT. Especially when I was dealing with some really sad stuff. Even more so because I was there for him when he found out his mom fell ill. And I was there for him at his mom's funeral. Like I said, I haven't spoken or texted him in almost three years. I chalked it up to people getting really weird when they have kids. That they fall into a traditional conservative mindset that anyone who isn't wanting or working toward a leave it to be the 2.5 kids situation is somehow suspect. Then today I see a text pop up on my phone from Dave. I never erased or blocked his number from my phone so his name was still saved. And there it was. He asked me to let him and his three kids stay with me at my house because their water heater broke. And it's kind of an emergency situation. He knows I now live in the same city as he does and it would be a really big favor for which he would owe me. Okay. So lots of emotions with that. Apparently since he told me I'm a bad influence, him and his wife had a third kid. It was a pandemic baby I guess. My biggest question was why ask me of all people. I asked Dave why he's asking me to do this for him. His response was basically that he's all out of options, and that no one has the room for him and the three kids. Especially with his five-month-year-old. I asked him why can't he arrange a hotel room for them. He said that it would be really expensive, and they're in a lot of medical debt already from their newest kid having to be in the NICU when he was born. I said that sounds tough, but again, why me? He said he knows I helped out someone last year with emergency housing, and saw I had enough extra room for guests. Since I was so generous back then I could be generous with him now. I knew exactly what he was talking about but I really wanted to know how. That situation was delicate and I thought a private family matter. He said it was posted on Facebook by the couple I helped. Apparently this was unbeknownst to me because I'm not on Facebook. Either the person whom I helped or her brother or his brother's wife posted something about how much of a decent person I was to help them out in a dire moment of need. And that it was a light during a very dark period for them. They told me as much to my face. I just didn't know that they shared the situation on social media. So back to today. Dave saw that stuff last year, kept it in his head, and thought I would let his family and kids into my home with open arms. Frankly, I told him to shove it. I was pissed he was trying to guilt me into letting him and his family into my house for an unspecified amount of time. That he knows I'm child-free. Hell he even said me being child-free is a bad influence on his family. Yet all of a sudden when it's convenient for him, 
I'm magically not a bad influence and he should be able to waltz back into my life without even a single apology for the shifty things he said three years ago. I told him being child-free means I don't want kids in my house for an extended period of time. If I did I wouldn't be child-free. That I was not going to disrupt my life and my two cats to be a bed and breakfast for his three kids. He said I was selfish, and to think of his kids. That there's no hot water in his house. I told him tough shiz. That he can whip out a credit card or get one of his relatives to cover a hotel stay. He gave me more excuses. He brought up their medical debt again and said it'll only be for a few days. I said that multiple days for a broken hot water heater sounds extremely suspect. Stuff like that can be fixed relatively quickly. I know residency laws in our state, and if someone stays seven days in someone's home then they can claim tenants' rights. I was not about to risk this turning into a thing where I can't get rid of them. He told me off and then said he will blast me all over social media and to all my friends that I won't help a family of three in an emergency. That I want little kids to suffer. Told him to pound sand and eat a hot pickle. He hasn't been a friend for years. He doesn't even know my address. All he knows is that I live seemingly close in the same city and that I live alone. He can blast me on social media all he wants. I'm not on Facebook so I don't give a single shiz what the gaggle of Karens think of me. I told him social media isn't real life. If he does actually share this with my actual friends, that they'd laugh right in his face. I told him I have all his texts for proof of the way he spoke to me and how he's a big scumbag. Told him he used to be a decent guy, that we had a lot of nice times together. That I'm still sorry about his mom. And I am sorry that he went down this path in life since it sounds like he must be really miserable. But he's a bad influence in my life so I just can't have him around. I'm sure he'll understand since he said the same about me. That was the gist of the last thing I said. He went off until I blocked him. I'm really sad about it. He really used to be decent person back 10 years ago and his mom was a lovely woman. I'm now bracing myself against flying monkeys who may come out of the woodwork and try to guilt me into taking in his family. I can't wait to tell them to take in his family themselves. I already talked about the situation with my two best friends, and they both were shocked that Dave was so brazen and had no shame. They thought it was suspect that he was so pushy about getting into my home. And for days. One friend said that her water heater broke recently and had a plumber come out the same day. It only took a day for it to be fixed. Being against the hotel idea was a red flag to them. They are curious what the whole story is. I agreed that it feels like it's missing something. I do feel a righteousness about all this. I know I did the right thing. I hate that a previous kindness was used as a weapon against me. Years ago I thought maybe he had a point that I was somehow not good enough because I was pretty depressed. Like, people don't want sad people around. Now with clarity I see that he had a profoundly bad character. But it did reopen old memories. Sad memories. Anyway, thanks for reading if you made it all the way through this. I had to get this off my chest and vent. No hot showers. Oh the humanity. But yeah, if you let them in they'd never leave. I'm so happy you didn't let him guilt trip you. Using his children as he did to gain sympathy from someone he wrote off for not having children is too effing hilarious. If it is him, his wife and three kids. That is a family of five and a lot for anyone to take in, let alone a single person. And one is an infant. That sounds like absolute chaos. The other people you helped was an adult couple who was spending most time at the hospital, not your home. He was a hot pickle to even ask, considering he denounced your lifestyle. I think his wife or something was threatened by you. Kids may have plenty of aunts or uncles that are single or child-free, and wouldn't think anything of it. No hot water is not an emergency. They can heat water on the stove to bathe the children. It sucks, but you gotta do what you gotta do. What an entitled jerk. My thoughts too. 
My family and I heated up water in Mexico to bathe ourselves. Exactly. It's funny how he's no longer worried about you being a bad influence on his kids. Oh my god, I'm so down for a part two. Dave is an asshole, good on you for standing your ground. I feel the same, please tell us how it continues later. I'm picturing Dave shows up at house, has already told children they are moving in. Threatened to leave kids on doorstep and call CPS for some reason, and assumes that Op can get info trouble for neglecting Dave's kids. You've got good instincts and I'm glad you didn't cave into the pressure. I'm glad you got to vent. What an absolute douche nozzle. I am sure is not telling the whole story. A lack of hot water for a day or two is not an emergency. Imagine being so effing entitled that you keep pushing when someone has already said no. Especially when you once trashed that someone for being a bad influence. Alert your neighbors in case this asshole drags his grifter family to your doorstep while you're out one day. I'm so glad you stood your ground. I can't stand when people use their kids as an excuse to get shiz for free. I have a cousin who has had all her kids eventually taken away. And she asked me for money when I was a broke college student. She used her baby as an excuse because her electricity was cut off and she needed AC for the baby. I said no. Then she went on to say that even her family ain't she's in a cryptic post on social media. I blocked her and haven't spoken to her since. Something exploded in my water tank and it was fixed the very same day. I shut off the water so it didn't flood the basement. I did this very easily. So no, it won't take a few days. This guy is a colossal piece of work and an effing awful liar to boot. At least make up a good excuse or story when you sob and beg. Shiz, sounds like something more than a broken water heater. Perhaps, an eviction happened. Thank F you didn't let the prick stay. To save your sanity, you'd probably have to pack up the kitties and all your shiz to get away from him and his collection of scabs. I love this story. That was obviously a tenant trap. Don't rack yourself trying to figure out the underlying causes. The only disappointment is I think you let him off too easy. I've lived in a house that had a super shifty landlord, and my boyfriend and I had to go about a week without heat or hot water, and it wasn't the end of the world. Luckily, we do live in a pretty hot area so it wasn't too bad, but the nights would get down to 40 or 50 degrees sometimes, and we just had to deal with it. To me, that's such an odd reason to ask to stay at someone's house. I understand they have a baby, but damn, they can go buy a portable heater inexpensively and put it in the baby's room. I definitely feel like there was a bigger reason he was so desperate to get into your house. What a strange, strange scenario. Anyway, good for you for setting boundaries. Don't worry about anything anyone says in social media. Parents will always envy child-free people, no matter what, therefore, they'll always find reasons to hate us. I want my cheesy puffs. The pregnancy trivia my best friend is giving me just reinforces my worldview that little bit more. I am having a movie night next week with my best bud, and this'll be the first time I'll have seen her bump in person. I ain't touching that she's even if she asks. I've heard enough from her to know that I don't want to go near that. I am surprised that she doesn't feel like John Hurt in Alien. Most of you probably know this but I didn't in this much detail. But when the organs are yeeted out the way by her sequel, the bowel and stomach can end up as high as the sternum. Holy shiz. No thanks buddy. I'm going to head out. So she's eating six or seven times a day, but small amounts, because the sequel won't let her have stomach space. I also now understand the term food baby a bunch more, because her nausea, and other symptoms are exactly how I feel after a monstrously large dinner. Anyway, the release date is at the end of January so we're getting a couple of movie nights in before Christmas, 
because she knows how I am around kids with my noise issues, and she respects the child-free thing too, hence, we are best friends forever. Folks, I am glad I have the wrong hardware for this. How the hell do the organs even reliably go back to the correct places? That's gotta feel so damn weird when it happens. Please like and subscribe.